first is basically the amendment of the Meghalaya Local Fund Audit Rules, 1996. Uh, basically, the amendment uh, was in, in terms of uh, updating the rules because a large number of uh, office memos have come out and uh, those F office memos then have to be incorporated in the rules. Hence, the um, amendment to the Meghalaya Local Audit Service Rules was done in order to update it with the different memos that have come out. Uh, the second decision was um, for rules to conduct departmental examinations of 2022. As you're aware, for the IAS, uh, we have uh, departmental exams are being conducted by the Assam Public Service Commission. Since we don't have rules and procedures out here to conduct exams here, we're a joint cadre. But uh, the cabinet today has decided that uh, we will have the examination centers uh, out here in terms of the departmental examination centers. These are for the IAS uh, officials who have already in probation or are joining. And uh, there are these departmental exams that are conducted. And normally they were conducted by the Assam uh, Public Service Commission. But now they'll be conducted here in Meghalaya uh, through the MPSC. And of course, uh, the, uh, the uh, syllabus will be more oriented, obviously, towards uh, uh, matters that are uh, regarding the state. And uh, obviously, we'll also see more usage and the options of using the languages uh, of Meghalaya, and, uh, which is Kasi and Karo language, will also be there. So these kind of options will be there for the uh, conduct of these departmental exams. And as I said earlier, these, these are for the um, IAS probationers of the Assam Meghalaya Joint Cadre. Uh, and uh, the allotted, those allotted to Meghalaya segment will be having departmental exams in Meghalaya. So this is not an IAS exam that we're talking about. We're talking about the IAS probationers. So earlier they used to have the exams in Assam. Um, Third is that uh, the cabinet has decided to group the posts carrying the same scale of pay with similar qualifications in one advertisement. This basically means that uh, today MPSC has to conduct uh, different exams uh, and uh, selection processes for different departments. And uh, in the process what happens is uh, it does take a lot of time because sometimes you have the same similar qualifications, similar um, uh, skills that are required or uh, you know, in posts that are carrying similar scale. So instead of having five, six different exams for five, six different departments, uh, the MPC will club uh, exams in one go and uh, those that are having the same scale of pay with similar qualifications will be, the exams will be held together. This is in, being done in the interest of saving time and to avoid uh, duplication. Uh, but of course, the respective departments post and uh, the necessary uh, reservation policy and the necessary um, the roster systems that need to be followed as per the cadre and uh, the post in those particular departments will be followed uh, as it is being followed right now. That will not change. But as I said, just the examination will be done together rather than having it separately. So this is one of the reforms that we're doing to streamline the working of the MPSC. Uh, we have also today adopted the uh, implementation of the prisons manual. For the last 50 years, uh, we have been using the Assam manual. And uh, for the last two years now, uh, there has been a committee that has been working on creating a, a prisons manual for Meghalaya. Uh, this is basically, in a very simple terms, an SOP of how uh, prisons should be managed and run. And this includes uh, multiple aspects of uh, uh, management and running of prisons, uh, including, you know, um, the uh, living uh, overall, I mean, the staying and the overall processes that have to be followed, uh, you know, in different situations, including even... Um, uh, overall welfare. Uh, so many other f uh, aspects are there and large number of them. It's a large, uh, almost 200-page manual. So it will not be possible for me to go into all of it, but it was long overdue. And we show that with this manual coming up, um, the overall management uh, of the uh, prisons will improve also in the, in the long run. 
to increase the age limit from 27 to 32 and subsequently the respective rules of the service rules of the Meghalaya District Court had to be amended to incorporate that change so that was done today and was accepted by the cabinet. Uh, we also had a proposal for the amendment of the uh, Meghalaya Goods and Services Tax Act 2017. It's an ordinance and basically this is being done as per the provisions or as per the decisions that were taken in the GST Council and all states uh, have been asked to make necessary amendments. Uh, these amendments uh, are many but the basic purpose of these amendments is to um, overall improve the compliance uh, by uh, different uh, taxpayers and uh, with that purpose a uh, large number of amendments in terms of compliance have been made and that has been adopted today uh, in terms of an ordinance which of course will have to be presented in the next assembly session. Uh, proposed for the amendment of the Meghalaya Prosecution Service Rules 2016. Uh, as you are aware that in the last SP conference uh, I had mentioned about this particular prosecution service rules and uh, this was necessary in order to improve the over overall prosecution and uh, the procedure and make the prosecution process faster and better. So the cabinet has decided on that and which would include uh, uh, the uh, regular appointment of uh, public prosecutors uh, in different districts and uh, also overall streamlining their performance, I mean the working system of uh, uh, the prosecution direct directorate. This was passed uh, way back in 2008, but necessary steps to um, actually implement them and streamline the process was not taken. So this will be a very important step and we are sure that with this step we will be able to uh, increase the overall um, uh, conviction rate also in the state, which will lead to overall efficiency of the system. LP and UP and non-government LP school teachers of Meghalaya appointed by the administration and deputy inspector of schools uh, post 1994 up to 2007. As you're aware that uh, when the state government had taken over the LP schools in uh, 1993, uh, large number of teachers had been shifted to government uh, and they had become regular government employees. But in that process, uh, almost close to 2,447 2, 2, teachers were left out in terms of uh, being regularized. Uh, this has happened for many reasons and uh, I don't want to go into details of that. But for all these years, these teachers have been receiving regular salary in terms of the scale, uh, the selection process also through which they were selected, uh, the process was followed properly. And uh, in spite of the appointments given to them during that period, the actual regularization of their post was never done, which means that uh, they were not getting pension and um, uh, AC, uh, A ACPS, uh, they were not getting all this while. So now with this decision of the cabinet today to regularize these 2,447 teachers, uh, they will now uh, be regularized, as I said, and they will be receiving, uh, yeah, they'll be regularized and accordingly they will receive the benefits that they're supposed to give as, get as regular employees. And this has been a long pending demand of these uh, 2,447 teachers and I'm happy that we have been able to regularize them today. The detailed list of the VIPs who will be uh, attending the Independence Day uh, hoisting, uh, fly hoisting program, so that list will come out as and when we finalize all the details. Um, yeah, I think those were the nine points. I think I covered all of them. So. If, I have, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Sir, Thank you. Coming to the regularization of uh, teachers, will there be any financial uh, the, the only financial implication will be pensions, as they are already getting the scale uh, of pay that uh, other teachers are getting. Over 2,568 schools of the uh, district council at that point in time. Um, what is this other question? I forgot. All the teachers. Are, ah, sorry. What? Uh, so there were, yeah, there, there were um, about approximately 136. I'll just read it out. That uh, when the state government took over the schools from district council, 136 odd schools were left out 
without taking over by without being taken over by the state governments which are left to be considered as uh, government schools apart from that also there were other schools and other uh, programs under which these appointments were made so ultimately uh, a large number of teachers from these schools also and other schools also got clubbed in but then uh, those processes and those programs at that point in time as i said uh, selection processes were done and state government had then made appointments but for whatever reason at that point in time they were not regularized uh, though they were receiving scale of pay so uh, to answer your question 2568 were taken over uh, schools were taken over 136 were left out and additional few more schools came in um and yeah so and out of that uh, so total 2447 teachers were left out